Guys, we're back down at Larry's Garage. We're here with his 59. He's doing a full restoration on his car. We're doing pants? We're doing pants. Removal and fitting new ones in place. Techniques help you guys, first timers, even if you've done it before, Larry has some sweet techniques for fitment and alignment. Yes, welders also provide us a plasma cutter to try out. I've only used one like one time. You've I've never, never used, used one. Used one. No. So looking forward to that. So let's get into this thing, shall we? So my first step uh, for pan removal is I always make these jigs to ensure that the new pan goes goes in in a proper position. Otherwise, we'll have alignment issues when we mount the body. So it's basically this locates the holes, the two front holes in the Napoleon's app, and it locates the two mounting holes on on the pan. You see how that fits in there, nice. So same with the rear. I we locate the two bolt mounting bolts for, on the cross member, rear cross member, and two rear bolts on the uh, floor pan. So this is the drop in. Locates, and as you can see, these bolts so that's the first step making these jigs to locate the pan. Because once we cut the pan away, we've lost all our reference. A couple other things I like to do is on the earlier bugs, the jack, the jack point is different than what's supplied. These I believe are a later design and I being a stickler for detail that I am, I'm gonna end up cutting this jack mount off, welding it onto the new pan. I've already taken my measurements, locating measurements, so I get it back in the right place. Also, I measured and located all the floor, floor mat mounting studs. On this side here, you can see the pan is a lot better. So I took measurements of the floor mounting studs and wrote it all down on a piece of paper. The other thing I do too when this pan is off, I, if you notice here, I sketched out two square holes. I will cut, cut into the tunnel. I'll make two covers for this. And the reason why I do that, that's an access hole to help aid hooking up clutch cable, things like that. It's, a, it's kind of a more of a service access. And I cut back here because I want to check the clutch cable tube. A lot of times that'll break free from inside the tunnel and it'll need to be welded. So I will check that and it also aids in me running a new fuel line through the tunnel. So those are some of the tricks that I do. So I guess we're all lined up. I'm gonna remove the jigs and we'll um, get this thing cut out. So we'll be using the Cut 65DS. It's 120 and 220. So we'll go ahead and get this set up and we'll put it to work. So when we make our cut, when we cut out the front part of the floor pan against the Napoleon's hat, the Napoleon's hat has a, a little nub underneath here. So you make sure when you cut this floor pan out, you want to stay away from that nub because you don't want to cut through it. And then uh, we'll remove this piece later. So the plasma did work cutting through the sheet metal, obviously. Larry's going to go and show you what he uses. Did you use the Sawzall there? Sawzall and die grinder. Sawzall and die grinder. Most guys don't have a plasma cutter, so Larry's going to show you what most of you all have. So when we do our cut through the rear, uh, we want to make sure the, the rear cross member comes over this way and then the floor pan lays on top of that. 
You don't want to cut, if you're reusing this and you're not using a supplied one, you want to stay off of this so you don't cut the rear cross member. And you can see underneath here where the two pieces overlap, so I want to stay off of this. And I can use this as my guide. Save it and remove the uh, jack mount. So we'll throw it outside for now. Can you the air chisel on that? Yeah, I'll probably use the air chisel. You guys can use a hand chisel too if you don't have an air chisel and a big hammer. So you want to be careful there to not cut through that, yep. that outer lip. That's why I didn't cut all the way through. Right, I didn't want to cut all the way through because I didn't want to cut through this knob. So now we can grind this down and get it ready for a new pan to sit in. So what we do now is we're going to finish removing a little bit of pan that's still left on the uh, lip. Now, if you notice, when I first do this, I like to push up from the bottom. That helps raise the old pan off the lip, and it also helps show where the spot welds are. Ah! <laughs> 
All right, so I just want to note to everybody, if you know the factory seam sealer that was installed between the pan and the tunnel, and we'll also replicate this uh, when we're finished. And also on the end, you can see where the pan uh, overlaps the rear cross member right here. So when we made our initial cut, we stayed away from this because you want to, I'll peel this back, and you want to not accidentally cut through this because this is needed for the uh, pan installation. So, I'll show you that. I just want to double check underneath here. The lip, okay. it up a little bit and we can do a test fit of the floor pan. Okay, so the right side uh, pan half is removed. I'm real happy the way that came out. So now we're ready to test fit the new one and this is just gonna be for test fitting reasons only. I'm not gonna weld it in yet because this is all gonna be a sandblasted and um, it's the ideal time for the sandblaster to really clean up that lip for me so I can get a really good weld. So we can do a test fitment, see if the pans fit uh, out of the box or do we have to do any trimming to them? And we'll find out and our jigs will tell us that. And in case anybody's wondering that's doing a resto, these pans originally were shiny, shiny black, not semi-gloss black. What pans did you go with? Wolfsburg West. Wolfsburg West, baby. We'll try them right out of the box. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Plus, I'm gonna get my hammer and dolly because at some point they always get dropped on one corner or another, so we have to straighten that out first. Not too shabby. This corner's folded in a little bit, so we're gonna off dolly. Be the most important thing. He works fast. I missed that. He's got no time for these videos. 
It's work to be done. We are we talk again? <laughs> the off dolly. Oh, the so, off dolly. So this lip is slightly bent up, so we're gonna off dolly this, meaning we're gonna put the dolly over here where the metal is flat for support, and then we're gonna slowly tap down this bent up edge. It's got drop on its corner, so we're gonna put the dolly on the top side. All right, that'll be good enough for a test fitment. Let's give it a whirl. All right, we're in. Do fit, but we're gonna double check and make sure everything is well. We're gonna do that with our jigs. So again, we're locating the hole in that, and these were matched to the original pan that came out. And as long as these fall into place in these two holes, we're good. Well, look at that. There's one. You can see the rear ones fit in, match the jig. Um, so yeah, the Wolfburg West pans fit this car without any trimming perfectly. But at least we know for sure. So when we, now when we mount our body on, everything's gonna line up and the bolts should just go right in. And the reason why we did that is because before we cut the old pans out, we installed the heater channels on the old pan in the car. And now that they're separated, they're gonna match. Everything pretty confident that they're gonna be a perfect fit. All right, so these are pretty simple to make. It's just basically strap steel. I welded them together first, and then I used some steel dowel pins to locate the mounting holes. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up this update of Larry's 59 Full Restoration. Larry, thank you for having us out, showing us your jig and the tips on pan removal and installation. What's next, other? Yeah, we're gonna remove the um, left side pan, uh, remove the jack points, and uh, do the same thing that we did to this side, and then remove the transaxle, remove the beam, and I got the sandblaster coming to sandblast everything. And then as soon as he's done, we'll uh, get these pans welded in and start the rebuilding process. Is that for the rotisserie? This... The pan will the paint, yes. Okay, nice. Yep, on rotisserie. All right, well, looking forward to that. Some of you guys might not even remember this car. It was on its way to Scrap Yard. In 1996, right? Earlier than that, I think, wasn't it? I don't know. And a gentleman that owned this garage would start his day out with a coffee in front of a shop, and he saw the car go by with the truck, the Scrap Yard. So he went down there. He saved the car from the scrapper, and then a gentleman that I got the car from stored it for, was it like 25 years? Mm -hmm. 30 something. Mm -hmm. So I pulled it out of the garage and I met Larry at a dust off and he asked me if I had any uh, earlier rag tops for sale. And I thought, yeah, I got just the car for you. <laughs> you dump it on me? So he saved it because it I had an easy, uh, not easy, but a hard refrain crappy tent that collapsed. So he saved it. It was dismantled, a lot of spot walls were drilled out. And the front quarter panel off of it. Yeah. and. Uh, I didn't think, well, it's over there. We'll give you another update. The body is, where's the body? The body, the body work is all done. I just put um, two coats of high dough primer on it. Now we're gonna block it once, and then uh, go over the whole car, fix all the tiny imperfections, and then we're gonna lay on uh, the final coats of primer. And then we'll let that sit, and then we'll get back on this. Nice. Get it rebuilt, the engine rebuilt, everything, go through all of this, and then when this is near completion, then we'll get some paint on it. Nice. And then we'll 
or the two to go. So looking forward to that. I know a lot of you guys were following his build, full restoration. It's going to be amazing to see this car completely restored mm. yeah. from where I saw it and found it. That's right. So thank you guys again. Make it a great week. Thanks again to Larry for having us, and we'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Thank you.